Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay so we were discussing that demand and quantity demanded demand curve and two concepts we have discussed uh, in this uh, connection that change in demand and change in quantity demanded by those two terminology what we refer. Now we will play with these concepts a little bit okay, to fine tune our understanding and in the process we will uh, bring certain concepts about the commodities certain commodities are called no, no, normal goods, certain goods are called inferior good like that we will define those things. Okay. So, look at here. So, let us for that let us go for a, a new slide. So, first what are the factors that determine one person's demand for a commodity or for a service right. We have discussed those factors what first own price the commodity we are talking about its price then price of the related commodities then income of the consumer test and preference of the consumer, expectation about the future and so on. Out of these five, uh, five factors what we told or say those factors are say own price, own by own price we are referring price of the commodity whose quantity demanded we are talking about, okay. own price, then uh, related commodities price, related goods price. income of the consumer and then to test and preference, test and preference of the consumer again preference of the consumer and expectation about the future expectation about the future and this expectation of the consumer only of the consumer you can tell ok. Look at here these five factors there may be other factors as well as we mentioned right or uh, whatever these five factors we mentioned first three factors are easily quantifiable right say own price no some rupees this much per unit of the commodity maybe per kg of the rice or maybe per liter of the milk or per maybe per uh, meter some some length per meter of the cloth something like that right uh, related goods price that is since again it is a some price of some other good right it is also uh, some rupees per unit something like that so income certain amount of uh, money Okay, your income. So, first three factors factor number 1, 2, 3 in this list you will see that these are easily quantifiable factors or those factors are quantitative kind of factors. Okay. Factor 4 and 5 look at taste and preference, expectation about the future and all these things are qualitative in nature and these two factors 4 and 5 what we referred here or what we mentioned here through uh, serial number 4 and 5 those factors are very difficult to quantify right. So, uh, we will discuss or we will define goods in terms of all these three factors first three factors which are easily quantifiable ok. So, own price, own price what is the my quantity demanded of a commodity vis a vis this commodity's price law of demand under the Ceteris Paribas condition if price increases I will try to consume less and vice versa right. So, we are getting a sense that okay, in usual case in the market for any commodity usual case I am referring I am telling I am putting an emphasis on here. Okay. If price moves one direction quantity demanded will move the opposite direction right. So, the commodity for which that is true commodity for which that relationship is true that commodity is called ordinary good ordinary good ordinary good okay or ordinary commodity now the question is 
can immediately come to your mind that can there be some commodity where uh, this relation may not hold good like may not hold good means what if price increases quantity demanded is also increasing okay can that happen in real life yes that can also happen some unusual cases i will tell and if for a commodity that thing we observe that commodity is called given good given good so on the basis of quantity demanded vis a vis its price on the basis of that relationship so on the basis of this first factor because it is own price no so on the basis of that quantity demanded vis a vis its price of a commodity that relationship we are classifying goods under two groups one group are called ordinary commodity where the law of demand is applicable or law of demand hold good as price moves one direction quantity demanded will move the opposite direction and vice versa okay or if increases that will fall or if it falls price falls quantity demanded will increase the opposite direction okay so the good for which that relationship hold good that those goods are called ordinary good there may be certain goods in the, I, I am coming I, am, I will come, come with a specific example then you will realize that for the commodity for which that relationship does not hold good in other words the commodity for which if price increases quantity demanded also increase and price if price falls quantity demanded also fall if that kind of commodity will observe in real life that kind of commodity is called given good okay so this is on the basis of this uh, own price quantity demanded relationship on the basis of price of the related commodity vis a vis uh, demand of a commodity okay we can uh, classify the goods into two groups again one is called substitute substitute vis a vis complement how okay substitute good say tea and coffee we told they are substitute right so look at here how it happen my demand for tea okay say quantity demand for tea right and price of a related commodity say coffee coffee is a related commodity how it is related with tea it's a substitute of tea in that sense it is related so if coffee price increase what I will do? I will try to consume coffee less, okay, law of demand. So, but I need some uh, hot drink per day. So, the I am cutting down my co coffee consumption because coffee price increases. That coffee consumption I want to substitute by my tea consumption. So, when price of coffee increases, quantity of tea purchase also increase or demand for T will increase. So, when related commodities price and demand for another commodity related commodity, okay, they are positively related both this is increasing, this is also increasing. Both are positive related that time it will be called substitute commodity. When this relationship is negative, so positive it is called substitute positive when this relationship is positive that time it is called substitute commodity substitute and when that relationship is negative that time it is called complement why it is negative and complement ok so tea and milk are complement because we used to mix milk into tea right they are complement to each other ok now suppose tea price increases what will happen i will try to consume tea less amount and since i want to mention a fixed proportion between tea and coffee while i am making my uh, tea and milk while i am making my tea then if i reduce my consumption of tea i need less amount of milk also so price of 
T increases, quantity of T consumption falls, as a result quantity of milk consumption also falls. So, what is the relationship between price of the T and quantity of the milk consumption? It is negative, price of T increases, quantity of milk consumption falls, okay? it is a negative. So, that is why it is complement. So, uh, let me repeat again price of one related good say suppose two good A and B, price of B and demand for A, A's demand and B's price, what is the relationship? If this relationship is positive, we will tell that A and B are two substitute commodity. If this relationship is negative, we will tell that A and B are complement commodities. Okay. One commodity is price, another commodity is quantity, demand, my demand for the other commodity. Okay. If this relationship is positive, both moves the same direction, the two commodities are substitute. If both moves the opposite direction, the two commodities are complement. So, on the basis of own price and quantity demanded relationship, we are terming or we are classifying the commodities into two groups, ordinary vis a vis given. I am coming, I will come for a specific example for given good. It apparently it seems very peculiar to your mind, I am coming to that. Price of the related commodity vis a vis demand for a commodity. That on the basis of that relationship, we are classifying the goods into two group, one is called substitute, another is called complement. Now, income of the consumer vis a vis demand for the commodity. So, income of the consumer vis a vis number 3, income of the consumer vis a vis demand for that commodity. On the basis of that relationship, we will also term or we will also classify goods under two uh, Plus, uh, two groups like this substitute versus complement, ordinary versus given like that. Okay. So, as per that classification, two types of goods are there normal good vis a vis or versus inferior good, inferior good. So, what is normal good? So, we are expecting that given all other things unchanged, if one consumer's income increases, perhaps his demand for a commodity will increase. So, there is a positive relationship we expect for usual case. So, usual case those kinds of, so when demand say two commodity A, no, not two commodity, one commodity only. So, demand for A, so okay, okay, let, me, let me tell in a different way. Say suppose, I am a consumer, there is a potential consumer, his demand for a commodity A and his income. Okay. What is the relationship? When income is increasing, if demand for A, demand for A is increasing, that means the relationship positive. In that case, the commodity will be called normal good. Of course, the opposite case when income increases, consumer will try its demand will fall for a commodity say B. So, then B will be called an inferior commodity. Inferior commodity, let me tell you, inferior commodities are usually inferior in nature to the consumer. By inferior in nature, what we are referring? So, so first on the basis of the relationship between income of the consumer and demand for a commodity. If this relationship is positive, we will tell for the commodity for which this relationship is positive, we will tell that commodity is a normal good. And if we have some commodity where this relationship is negative, we will tell that it is inferior good. Exactly the earlier we have also classified uh, for each of those other two factors. Now, all the three quantifiable factors, quantitative factors that can have influence on your demand or on your quantity demanded, we classify the goods into two groups. 
normal visa is inferior when income is concerned, substitute visa is complement when price of the related commodity is concerned and ordinary good visa is given good when price of the own commodity is concerned. Okay. So, let me classify first or clarify first what is the inferior good. Inferior good are usually inferior to you, inferior to the consumer in which sense consumer does not really like to consume that commodity. But because income is very less, consumer cannot meet up or cannot consume the other commodities what he or she likes actually, because what he or she likes those commodities are more expensive. Say suppose say I need uh, say 5 kg of rice per week to maintain my family. right? Now, uh, there is a thick rice which I do not like. What I like? I like basmati rice. Okay? Basmati rice per kg say 100 rupees, okay? but this thick rice per kg say 20 rupees my income per week per say 100 rupees. So, definitely within that 100 rupees I have to manage to consume 5 kg of rice because that is required to maintain my family per week. So, definitely I will go for the uh, thick rice although I do not want to consume that rice, I want to consume basmati rice. right? But with my income 100 rupees if I want to purchase basmati rice I can purchase only 1 kg, 1 kg is not enough to maintain my family for that week. So, with the income I cannot manage to have basmati rice. That is why I am forced to indirectly forced to consume thick rice which I really do not want to lie, I do not want to consume. Now, suppose tomorrow my income increases to 500 rupees per week, what I will do? I will quickly switch from uh, this thick rice to basmati rice because basmati rice price is 100 rupees. So, with 500 rupees my income I can purchase 500 uh, 5 kg of basmati rice and that is required for my family. Now, you look at my income vis a vis my consumption of thick rice, my income increases my consumption of thick rice falls earlier it was 5 kg now it is 0. Okay. Tomorrow if my income becomes 200 rupees per week, perhaps I will consume little bit basmati rice and little bit thick rice to make this to, to, uh, total sum of these two type of rice is 5 kg because I do not need more than 5 kg per week to maintain my family. right? So, if, if you look at your income vis a vis the consumption of this thick rice, what will happen? When your income was 100 rupees per week, you are purchasing 5 kg of thick rice. When your income is 200 rupees per week, perhaps you are consuming 4 kg of thick rice okay, and maybe 1 kg of basmati rice or little that kind of that kind of combination. Okay. So, if you compare that when your income is increasing, your thick rice consumption is falling. So, there is a negative relationship between your income and your consumption of that commodity thick rice commodity. So, thick rice is really inferior to you. Let me repeat again, you do not really like to consume that, but your income level is so less that you are forced to consume that. That is why I am telling that inferior commodities are inferior in nature to the consumer. And of course, this inferior commodity is a subjective concept means certain commodity which may be inferior to me but may not be inferior to some other com consumer okay? and vice versa of course. Vice versa means certain commodities may be uh, inferior to that consumer, but that may not be inferior to me. That depends on that depends on individual consumers choice towards different commodities. Okay? I hope everybody understand that inferior commodity. Usual case if our income increases given all other things unchanged, we will try to demand more of a commodity that and if that relationship holds good for certain commodity, we will tell that commodity as normal good. If that relationship does not hold good and that rather the opposite is observed, when my income is increasing, I am trying to reduce the demand for a commodity, definitely that commodity will be an inferior commodity to me, the person whose demand is behaving in this way. 
this commodity is inferior to that person. Okay. Now, let us discuss the given good. Given goods are actually uh, inferior good. Okay. Uh, th th there is a, there is a uh, we can prove that uh, one good uh, to be it to be given to me, it has to be first inferior to me, but that proof is beyond the scope of this uh, syllabus. So, we will not prove that, we will try to give an example from where you will get a sense by the given good what we are referring. Actually, uh, say uh, this, uh, this example first observed by an economist called Giffen. So, that is why honoring him we call this commodity as Giffen good. Giffen first observed for a European country say Ireland, they are major food commodity for the people are say potato and meat potato and meat, two major ingredients. The society uh, largely based on these two commodities. Okay. Now, potato is some sort of inferior to them, because the people they want to consume more meat, okay. but uh, when their income is very less, uh, they cannot afford to purchase as many meat as they want. So, they have to purchase some potato and some meat. Okay. So, suppose uh, when income is say uh, 1000 rupee per week, say, uh, say suppose meat price is say rupees 900 per kg and potato price say rupees 25 per kg. Okay. So, there is a family whose income is 1000 rupee per week and that family needs 5 kg of food, this is 100 rupees 100 per week and this is also per week. Okay. So, there is a family whose income is 1000 rupees per week and that family needs 5 kg of food, food items per week to maintain their family. Right. So, when meat price is 900 rupee per kg and potato is rupees 25 per kg, okay. so that uh, family is consuming say 1 kg of meat and 4 kg of potato. So, 4 and 5 total 5, 4 and 1 total 5 kg of food items and 4 kg of potato is basically 25 into 4 100 rupee and 1 kg of meat is 900 rupee, 900 and 100 this 1000 rupee they are spending. right? Now, if tomorrow potato price say suppose increases, what will happen? Okay. Potato price increases, what will happen? Say suppose potato price increases to say 40 rupee per kg, rupees 40 per kg. You will understand that if that family wants to purchase same 4 kg of potato and 1 kg of meat, it cannot manage that within this 1000 rupee per week. right? So, what it will do? It has to manage the 5 kg total in a week. right? So, what it will do? it will cut down its meat consumption to get some additional money and it will try to consume more potato. Look, when potato price is increasing going up, it can no longer continue to purchase 4 kg of potato and 1 kg of meat. Definitely it can't because it needs 5 kg, but that 5 kg earlier combination it can't con continue. Okay. So, what you have to do? it definitely has to cut down its meat consumption. If So, can the other can happen that it will reduce its potato consumption and increase its meat consumption? Definitely, it cannot man, man, manage 5 kg to, uh, to purchase from the market in the new price scenario. So, only one option what it can do, it will cut down its meat consumption and it will increase its potato consumption. So, that 5 kg it can manage with that 100 rupee, 1000 rupee per week income. Now, if you look at what how the potato consumption vis a vis potato price is behaving in this particular scenario. When potato price was 25 per kg, that time it was consuming 
फोर के जी अफ पटाटो वेन पटाटो प्राइस इनक्रिजेस टू से फर्टी रुपी पर के जी इट इज इनक्रिजिंग इट्स पटाटो कंजमसन सो प्राइस अफ पटाटो इनक्रिजेस कंजमसन अफ पटाटो अल्सो इनक्रिजेस सो प्राइस एंड क्वांटिटी कंजमसन दोज आर मुविंग इन द सेम डायरेक्शन डेफिनेटली गिफ एन गुड एंड दैट कैंड अफ सो हे आर दैट लॉ अफ डिमांड इज नट होल्डिंग गुड एंड रेदर इट्स अ अपोजिट फेनोमेन ऑफ व्हाट लॉ अफ डिमांड टेल्स अस ओके सो दिस कैंड ऑफ सिचुएसन कैन हेपन रियल लाइफ इन रियल लाइफ एंड दोज कैंड ऑफ कमोडिटीज आर कल्ड गिफ एन गुड हे आर प्राइस ऑफ दि कमोडिटी एंड क्वांटिटी डिमांडेड ऑफ दैट कमोडिटी आर मुविंग इन द सेम डायरेक्शन पॉजिटिवली रिलेटेड ओके सो दिस थिंग्स फास्ट ऑब्जर्व दिस बिहेवियर फास्ट ऑब्जर्व बाय वन इकोनॉमिस्ट कॉल्ड गिफ एन एज आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड एंड दैट इज आई दिस कमोडिटीज आर कॉल्ड गिफ एन कमोडिटीज टू ऑनर दैट पर्सन सी सम ऑफ यू मे बी नाउ quite curious sir can there be a society or uh, yeah where are the principal principal food grains or food stuffs are potato and meat only i am sure uh, many of you uh, can can hard already hard or you may watch also that there is a uh, beautiful painting called the potato eaters potato eaters It's a world famous painting by Vincent Van Gogh. Okay, you know that Vincent Van Gogh. I think he was a Dutch, Dutch painter. Okay, and beautiful, beautiful. He has uh, beautiful paintings are there. One painting is called the Potato Eaters. And if you see that painting, it's an amazing painting. It's an entire family. It's a, it's a labor class family, some lower class family, working class family. Okay, entire family, three four members. they are having their dinner and they, in the dinner they are eating potato so that is why that name of that painting is the potato eaters okay it's an amazing painting you just google you can if you don't already see you just google and you see that beautiful that that using the painting color how the light effects it comes it's it's an amazing kind of painting why i am telling that yes there may be certain uh, people who's Uh, principal food stuff eat potato okay and from there this potato eaters comes okay the picture of potato eaters comes or painting of potato eaters comes anyway so this is all about the demand quantity demanded and all those things supply we have already defined okay let us now discuss that that supply schedule and supply curve so usually we told in the very beginning sometimes back we we told that during while we were discussing uh that one of the principles that people respond to incentive that time we told that same something same happened that can pose two different types of incentive apple apple uh, consumption and uh, apple production example we gave if you can remember if apple price increases tomorrow who are the consumer who are the customers of apple in the market they will perhaps try to consume less but who are the producers of apple what they will do they will definitely try to produce more to in increase their income increase their earning from apple growing okay so now we are going to discuss the supply side okay so demand curve as we discussed usually demand curve so can we tell that if we have a demand curve this kind we are measuring price in the vertical axis quantity demanded in the horizontal axis and we have a demand curve downward sloping so this demand curve for a commodity or for a service that definitely is a ordinary good and we can have this kind of demand curve where the commodity is given good because given good quantity demanded and price relationship is positive so we will get a curve which is upward sloping so in this particular case this is also demand curve this is also demand curve okay so this particular case ordinary good demand curve ordinary case and this is definitely given case okay okay so let us let us come to the supply and just introduce the supply and then we will continue in the next class as we told what is the supply supply is my willingness or someone's willingness or desire to deliver some product in the market but that definitely should be backed by his or her ability to sell that product 
right so, that is the supply and exactly the same way we can have a supply schedule ok. So, quantity supplied quantity supplied and price and different alternative numbers if we have ok. So, this kind of tabulated figures we will tell that supply schedule and if we plot those supply schedule into a diagram again if we measure price in the vertical axis and quantity supplied q uh, superscript or subscript s here q superscript or subscript d d for demand here s for supply quantity supplied we will definitely get an upward sloping line because usually when price of a commodity increases who are the producers class they will be incentivized to produce that commodity more to try to supply that commodity more for their income earning or increase their earning right. So, usual case demand curve is downward sloping and supply curve is upward sloping, but certain unusual case like given good kind of situation demand curve may be also upward sloping ok. Let us stop here we will continue in the next lecture in this chapter also we will continue uh, until that you take care.